All right, jabronis, we're back. Hope everybody had a great week. For all you noobs out there, welcome to the Libretti Podcast Diary Show. I'm Libretti. That's me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, put the notification how you doing on the little the little bell icon. Click that. You'll get notified when when I'm around. And you can go view and tune in and listen and do all the how you doings. Apple, Spotify's, YouTube's, do it. Um, another good, good, busy week. Interesting week, uh, to say the least. Uh, got some good news though. Before we get into, it, I want to make this uh, quick and uh, educational for everybody this week. This is an education piece uh, that lessons will be learned and taught. Uh, but good news. Got a call from the doctor. The babopsy came back on the cyst, and as expected, it was benign. It was nothing. It was a piece of crumb cake. It was garbage, okay? They can't take your boy down, all right? They tried. People tried. They tried to implant stuff in me, but it's not going to work. So another bad day for my enemies. I'm sure you guys are super happy to hear about that. Um, what else we got? Tank tops are still available. Here they are right here. I'm repping the merch. This is pretty much going to be my uniform for the foreseeable future. Um, I'll open uh, open it up now. DM me, email me, text me if you want them. You can uh, Venmo or Zell me the money. We'll we'll figure that out easy peasy. Uh, but we got some you know larges and mediums left. Um, and if you if you do already have one, uh, rep it out there. S- uh, send some pics. I'd love to see you guys out in the wild with the LPDS merch. Um, I know the Bone Crusher Iron Mike Dakota uh, has been wearing it at the gym, and and people have been uh, breaking their neck checking it out. So uh, good on him, uh, and thanks for your support. So again, we're gonna try to move this along. This is a, this is lessons here, and then I also want to drop the topic completely um, and see if we can have a good time doing it too. But anyway, we'll just get right into it. Step into the cage. Okay, let's run. All right. Today's Into the Cage segment is proudly sponsored by Ajita Away. Are you tired of having to take multiple antacid pills throughout the day just because you indulge in one bowl of spicy chili for lunch? How would you like to eat all the chili you want and only have to take one pill a week? Well, with Ajita Away, now you can. You see... Ajita Away's patented chewable technology allows you to take just one giant chewable at the beginning of each week. Then you can sit back and know you'll be clear of the bubble guts for the next seven days. So to get your first bottle of stomach relief today, consult your local 7-Eleven cashier. And if you use the promo code Malone, you'll get 2.9% off your first order. It seems like a no-brainer to me. Don't want to take your Tums all the time, your Peptos, your Alka-Seltzers, take one Ajita away, and the Ajita is gone. Ajita is a greaseball slang for heartburn and stomach acid indigestion. How you doing? All right. Uh, The cage fact. Okay. So he's been doing a lot of interviews lately for his upcoming film, of, of course, Highly anticipated upcoming film, um, and some of these interviews have gotten into you know a lot of a lot of deep diving into the world of Nick Cage, which obviously I love. Uh, and one of those th- topics was going into his you know his string of really bad movies uh, that he had between like 2009 and 2014 or whatever it was, um, where he was making like it seemed like he was filming four or five movies a year. And most of them were objectively bombs. I still enjoyed them because because Nick Cage was in them, but they were objectively bombs. Now, in this one interview that he did, they kind of talked about why. And one of the reasons we already knew, we already discussed previously, was that he had some uh, some tax debt, um, had some issues with his with his account and his his money manager, uh, who you know he en- ended up suing for. Not malpractice, but whatever, you know, misguidance, if you will. Anyway, he got into a lot of tax debt, so he needed to take pictures, you know, take movies to uh, to get some money and pay those off. Um, one thing he said, by the way, caveat, was that 
Although the movies were garbage, he still tried in each movie. He did not phone it in at all. He always cared about his role in the movie, even though he knew the movie might not have been uh, successful or whatever. But anyway, um, another reason that is not very public as to as to why else he was taking these movies, why he was in so much debt, was that he was he was paying tons and tons of money to get his mother uh, medical treatment, mental health treatment. Um, in 2009, his father passed away of a heart attack. And I guess his mother just had a sort of like a mental breakdown from there. I didn't really go into details about the situation, but he was trying to get her the treatment needed so that she didn't have to go to a mental institution. Um, and I, I think he actually had to send her to one uh, because of the breakdowns. But he was doing his damnedest to try to get her the help she needed before kind of having to resort to that. So that's just kind of into the life of the cage. Now we talk about like, he's kind of a larger than life sort of figure, at least in my mind. Um, but one thing to remember, and this is something we talk about in the big three, and we'll keep talking about it more later today and in the future is that no matter, no matter who these people are, celebrities, politicians, you know, astronauts, whatever, they're still human beings. You know, they still have human being shit going on in their lives. And this is one of those one of those human elements, these human factors that people don't really think about when they're talking about Hollywood celebs and, uh, and big timers on the on, you know, on the screen, on the big screen. So that's just kind of like humanizing. It, it gets you to kind of relate to somebody. And if there's anyone I want to relate to more, it's it's the great one. So uh, really fun interview to read kind of sad to think about. But also, you know, again, it humanizes and makes it more relatable and things like, oh, man. This this guy is also going through some shit and dealing with some shit. Um, and, you know, that's that. That's the cage fact. All right. Moving on, we'll spin up into the junction. Now, I want to talk about this. Clearly, the big news of the week has been the Will Smith, Chris Rock do to do during the Oscars. Now, this is the this is the big caveat real quick about all this. We're going to talk about it today in this episode, and then we're not going to talk about it again. Unless you guys got some really good jokes, new jokes that you want to chime in with and give feedback to, to me so I can present them, uh, that's fine too. Otherwise, we're dropping the topic because it's, it's already getting old. I'm late to the party. Of course, this has to happen right after an LPDS episode drop. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to chime in immediately, but it did give me a, the time needed to evaluate the situation, do exactly what we teach on the LPDS, critically analyze the things that went on, the occurrences, and, and, and learn lessons from them. Submit your own little kind of mental after action report and build and grow off of that. And that's a big thing for me. And I know for us here is... We could turn everything into a lesson. There's two things I think that you can turn almost everything into. You could turn almost everything into a joke, dark humor, slapstick, dad jokes, garbage humor, whatever it is. Anything can be a joke if you try hard enough. And I think it should be. And I'll caveat this again, too, is despite you know people getting offended by everything, uh, there is almost no untouchable thing. There probably are a few that I'm that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, so I'm going to not completely generalize. There are some things that are serious, but finding the humor in things is is something that really helps people become, you know, less stressful, understand like the bigger picture in life is that there always is something laughable about things. And I'm not saying go joke at your, you know, your cousin's funeral or something like that, but you got you to be tactful, but there's always humor. You can fi find the humor in things and take that for the positive that it is and not try to pick it apart with the semantics of like, oh, what if somebody got killed? Got it. There are some things that you can't joke about all the time. But anyway, find the humor in things. That's one. And then find the lessons in things. Those are the two real attributes that you can kind of take from every situation. There's always going to be a joke, whether it's funny or not ill-timed or not, offensive or not, and there's always going to be a lesson learned. And that's what I tried to do here is pick apart the lessons, do my analytical, how you doing, train the brain, you know, keep 
keep working and improving the brain muscles and the cogs in the wheel here and try to find some lessons. So that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the lessons of this whole situation. Now, a quick breakdown for those of you living on Mars who didn't see what happened. Uh, and I, you know, in the beginning, I don't blame you because the Oscars has been so wildly unpopular and it's such a stinker lately that I haven't watched it in years. I used to love watching it. Haven't watched it in years. It's, it's absolute trash. Uh, so I didn't immediately see this one happen, but it's been it's been over a week now. Uh, you know, you should have seen. It. And if you're listening to this, you know, months or years in the future, uh, I'll do the breakdown for you now. So we're in 2022. It's uh, currently April 3rd when you're listening to this or when this is posted. Uh, but this happened the previous Sunday at the Oscars of 2022. Um, so what happened was real quick, Chris Rock. He's on stage presenting an award or something. I don't even know what he was actually doing up there. Presenting an award, I think. He uh, he was hired to do that, asked to do that as a comedian for the Hollywood celebs. And he's doing crowd work before he gets to you know reading his script. That's what comedians do. They do crowd work. They make jokes, work the crowd. And then they read from the teleprompter and present their award and, and what have you. Um, and in the front row of the Hollywood, of the Oscars, the Hollywood, uh, was Will Smith and Jada Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, of course, because Will Smith's a big timer. He was up for an Academy Award for the Williams sisters story, King Richard. Um, and he sees Jada Pinkett Smith. She's bald. She's wearing a green dress. Um, and he made a joke about her looking like G.I. Jane. Very kind of off the cuff, crowd work style joke. Did not, nothing really planned. It was like, oh, there's Jada Pinkett Smith. Can't wait to see G.I. Jane, too. You're thinking a, a, a woman, shaved head, G.I. Jane. It's a, you know, it's a layup. We'll get into the joke itself later on. There's a lesson to be learned there. Um, and, it's, and it's probably the most important one, but we'll get into that. Will Smith, they cut to him. He kind of politely chuckles. You can make, you know, you can analyze that, whether if it, he thought it was funny initially or he was just being nice or he was like laughing when you're just so fed up with a guy that you're just like, ah, oh, this motherfucker. Maybe that was what it is. Sorry, Terrence family show. But anyway, he chuckles. They cut over to to Jada's reaction. She kind of does an eye roll, not very happy. And then they cut back to Chris Rock. And all of a sudden, Will Smith walks onto the stage. This is live TV. Uh, no edits. Goes up and, and bitch slaps Chris Rock real quick. Didn't wind back too much, but he he kind of held it in the hip in the hip holster and then bam, right upside the head around the jaw. And then he walked back, uh, you know, like a tough guy. And then that's when he, he actually got mad and was yelling at him um, from, you know, from the seat about keeping my wife's name out your mouth and all that. How you doing? And then Chris Rock moved on from there uh, amicably. OK, so. That's the situation. Objectively speaking, that is that is what happened. All right. Time. Now we're going to break it down. OK, time to break it down. All right. First lesson. Lesson number one. This is really for Chris, for Chris Rock and for um, any comedian out there listening or aspiring comedian or anyone who's who feels that in the future they might get asked to do an award show as a comedian by Hollywood. When they're asked to do an award show for Hollywood celebs, for the wokes on a live stage. If they ever ask you to do that as a comedian, as a top tier comedian, you want to say no to that. OK, that's a lose lose situation. All right. You're dealing with actors in Hollywood. Who are probably the softest, biggest beta bitch boys around in this country, most out of touch easily offended, weak little bitches that we know of. Easily the softest group out there. Easily. And then you got an A-list comic who's made his money trashing people, making dark jokes, dirty jokes, going all out, going all in. That's how he made his money. That's how he became super successful. And he's damn good at it. One of the best to ever do it. Incredibly funny. Pulls no punches. This is not the scene for you, Chris. And it's not the scene for anybody who actually wants to be a comedian and doesn't want to hold back and offend anybody. Doesn't you know? If you care about that stuff, this is not you know. You shouldn't be a comedian, first of all. And you shouldn't. If you are a good comedian and if you have pride in your craft as a comic, this is not the this is not the uh, you know the avenue for you. 
not avenue, the venue, just the venue, not avenue, venue. Take a letter out, just the venue. That's not it for you. You got to make you got to make better decisions like that, Chris. You don't need the money. You're still super successful. You're still doing stand up. You're hitting the road still. You're in movies, all the Adam Sandler movies. I love them. I don't care what anyone says. Don't need that. You don't need that. There's no reason for you to waste your time on this garbage, especially as the the Oscars continue to go further and further down in the shitter. So be better than that. Okay, and this is the lesson for everybody else. Understand the opportunities presented to you, whether, you know, if they're lose-lose, don't waste your time. I know like, oh, no, you know, publicity is bad publicity, but it's a, it was a waste of your time. You're not getting anything out of it unless you like seeing and uh, glorifying all these, these other human beings who think they're better than everybody else and they're just softer and weaker. Uh, so that's the lesson really more for Chris and for any uh, comedians out there listening. I'm sure there's plenty of you. All right. Lesson two. This lesson is really for Will Smith and for everybody in general who is going to shows like this, to live performances, okay? You got a comic on stage. He's a comedian. He gets paid to be a comedian and make jokes, okay? He was hired for this event. Now, I know this is not a comedy show, so you're not necessarily paying to see someone make jokes, but this portion of the show was for the jokes, They hired a comedian to make it funny to get people watching and viewing because that's what they care about, the viewership and the money. And if you can laugh about it, the more funny something is, the more successful it's going to be when it comes to stuff like this. So he's a comedian hired to do jokes. Okay. Keyword there is jokes. All right. When you're in that setting, read the room. That's the lesson. Read the room. Clearly, Chris Rock was doing crowd work, okay? He wasn't going after Jada Smith's alopecia or whatever she has. He probably didn't even know about it. Most of us didn't know about it except for the diehard Will and Jada followers who listen to every stupid interview that they do together or separately where she's talking about how she really loves Tupac and he was the guy for her and she has to settle for Will Smith because Tupac's dead now, whatever. And then she she made an interview that she has alopecia and she's very self-conscious about it. Got it. Serious. It's a serious thing. We understand that. But there's no way Chris Rock made that joke to take a dig at her alopecia. He did not even know it, she had it. She's been dealing. She's been working with short hair on and off her entire career. OK. There's no way he made that joke directed at her. He was doing crowd work. That's what you do. You walk through the crowd. You see people, you make the joke, you move on to the next one. That's what a good crowd work comedian does when they start their show. They make people laugh, they joke about each other, and then they go on to the rest of their set. And that's what he was doing. It was a simple joke, okay? And a big thing about jokes, too, and I believe... What the hell is that fat comedian's name who passed away? Patrice O'Neill. that's it, nailed it. Patrice O'Neill, I think, said this was that no matter what, whether it's offensive, not funny, hurtful, hilarious, garbage, whatever, no matter what it is, all jokes come from the same place. They all come from that same place of where you're just trying to be funny and make people laugh. Okay, Chris Rock was not standing up there and being like, I hate this bitch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find her weakness and exploit it to the, to the live national audience, international audience, everyone who's watching. And I'm going to show her and I'm going to pick her apart because I hate her. He wasn't doing that. OK, he was trying to be funny in the moment. It was an in the moment joke. That's what crowd work is. You don't you can't script crowd work. You know, you don't know who's going to be in the front row. He made a joke. We'll talk about the joke later on, but that was it. You got to read the room. Okay, when you're in those situations, the lesson here is understand your surroundings, have situational awareness, step back and read the room. Be better than that. Lesson three, this is also for Will Smith and for everybody in general, especially people who are getting too big for your britches. Check your ego at the door. Okay, you're a human being. You're a person. 
Everybody around you is a person and a human being. We just discussed it during the cage fact. We're all human beings. OK, unless you're a murderer or a rapist. Or a pedophile, sex criminal. Or do, you know, a bad guy, terrorist, what have you. We're all we're all kind of equal on equal footing. We're just human beings. Just because you are in movies and your job is to lie and pretend to be somebody else on camera doesn't make you better than anybody else to the point where you can do think you can do whatever you want. So in, in what world do you think that it's OK to respond to a joke by walking on stage and slapping someone, hitting them? On live TV, and then and then walking away like you're a big shot. Will Smith, who I love, I love his movies. Whether you like the movies or not, well, I like probably the only ones that everybody else likes: Men in Black, Independence Day. Um, that's about it. Wild Wild West, I like that one, even though it stunk. But Will Smith is great. Fresh Prince, I loved Will Smith. But it doesn't matter. He's still a guy. He's still a man, a human being. You got to act like a human being, not like you're above everybody else. OK, his ego is now getting out of control. He's kind of going he's kind of getting very close to that Sasha Baron Cohen level or that Dr. Fauci level where he's becoming buddy love. Like we talked about previously, where his ego is just taking over. He's a different person now. It's just ego. It's just buddy love now and not no longer Will Smith. You got to check your ego. You got to, again, take the step back and understand that you are a human being. That person is a human being. Everybody around you is a human being, a person. And you're no better than anybody else where you should be, where you think you should be able to do that stuff and get away with it. It was uncalled for. Nobody should be able to do that. Okay. Nobody would do that in any other setting either, except in Hollywood land where they think they're better than everyone else because they're soft and weak. Nobody's doing that at regular comedy shows. I would love to see somebody do that at like a Chris Stefano comedy show where that big, goofy Italian style bastard from New York is up there making jokes and then some asshole gets offended and tries to storm the stage. He'd kick your ass. Also, <laughs> there's a little bit of difference here with, co with comic shows, you know, comedians shows and specials and stuff is that you're paying them to listen to them make jokes about you, essentially. So I, I would love to see that. You're not going to, hopefully you're not going to knock on wood that it doesn't, people don't think that they can just do that whenever a joke is offensive. But before you're in situations like that, check your ego. Remember who you are in comparison to the rest of the world. You're just a guy, Will. You're just a fucking dude, Okay. You can't just go up there and slap somebody else and think you can get away with it and that nothing's going to happen to you because you're Will Smith. You're King Richard. Give me a break. And then he makes some BS excuse trying to blame the fact that I got so involved in my role as King Richard where he fiercely protects his family. I just I guess I got more in common than I thought. Give me a break, dude. And then he apologizes to everybody but Chris Rock. And then what does he do after a few days later? He apologizes via like Twitter or Instagrams or some shit like that. Like the, you should do the opposite. The exact opposite way that you went about it is what you should have done. OK, if you were mad at the joke and you took offense to it or your wife took offense to the joke, you sit there like an adult, you be professional and then you have it out with Chris Rock privately behind closed doors and you let him know that it, that it was a problem. And he shouldn't be doing that shit again. And then you you praise in public, you you punish in private praise in public. That's something you learn in the military. It's uh, it's one of those things that the military teaches you. They don't exactly do it all the time, but it's a lesson that you could take. You should take and learn and actually practice in, in real life. And then he says his apology should have been in public to Chris and actually eaten his words. And, you know, don't quibble, essentially. What he did was he quibbled. He acted like a little bitch boy. He wasn't a man. You got to be a man and admit when you're wrong. Okay? And that's really what the lesson is here, is that you got to admit when you're wrong. 
because we're all wrong. That's the thing is we're all human beings going back to lesson three. We're all human beings. Check your ego and realize when you're wrong, you got to admit it appropriately. Don't quibble. Don't make excuses. Don't pretend it was justified. It was a joke. He didn't even say anything disrespectful. Don't sit in the front row if you don't want to get crowd worked on you. I mean, again, be a man or a woman, be an adult and handle things appropriately in that situation. It's not like he was coming after him with a knife and you had to protect your, your family. It was a weak ass joke, which brings me to the final lesson. There's many more, but I'm, I'm just keeping it short and sweet. We don't want to fire hose you with information, overload you on lessons here. But the final lesson, probably the most important one, this is for Chris Rock and for everybody, is take advantage of every opportunity presented to you. All right? This was a lose-lose situation. He should have said no to begin with to, to being a part of this stupid show. Uh, but he decided to take, you know, to take on the role. And then he and then he lays up, you know, he just takes a dump on the stage with that garbage joke, which is really the true travesty is the missed opportunity of this joke. You're doing crowd work in Hollywood. It's a lose lose. OK, nobody's going to think you're funny regardless. So you're either going to have to make garbage, weak ass jokes. And not be who you really are, or you're going to be who you really are, and people are not going to like you in that crowd. Everybody else in the real world would love you. So he should have gone all in. Like that British guy, Ricky Gervais, went all in. Loved that one. That was awesome. He's never getting invited back again. And he knows it. He took advantage of that opportunity. Okay? He saw the opportunity, and he snagged it aggressively. And it was awesome. And that's what Chris Rock should have done. I mean, that was a weak-ass joke. You're just... Doing crowd work, you see, that's such a layup. Oh, bald woman, female actress, G.I. Jane. Easy, done, check the box. Like, you just check the box of crowd work and jokes. Do something better. I mean, he, she, look at her, look at some, look at her dress, look at what she's doing. Like, be aggressive. You want to, you want to take a stab at somebody with the crowd work. Go all in. No, you're not going to be invited back regardless, Chris. So just go all in. Go ham on the joke. Maybe something like, oh, that's a beautiful dress, Jada, but it's so big. What do you got, August Alcina under there? Something like that. Go all in. Atta attack, the, attack them where, they, where they're actually you know, justified to attack them. Make the big joke. Be the comedian that got you where you are now. That's what he did. He always went for the home runs. He still usually does, except for there. He went for the bunt or the hit by pitch, and he got hit for sure. No pun intended. And then his response, again, another missed opportunity. Now, I will say this. A very mature response, okay? He had a bit of an emotional reaction, a very justified emotional reaction where it was just like, what the hell is going on, dude? It was just a joke. And then he kind of moved on. He was still flustered, clearly, but he still tried to read through and power through the rest of his, his time and set on there. Uh, and so he did the mature professional thing again. But at that point, you're almost justified to, to respond again in kind, all in. Go balls deep on him. Give, give the people what they want. At that point, it's it's... No holds bar. All hell is broken loose already. You have a celebrity jumping on stage on live TV to slap, bitch slap another celebrity. I mean, you react in kind at that point. Make it the show. Make it the circus act that, uh, that has been created. Give the people now what they really want and give them those jokes, those hard any jokes. Take that opportunity. Oh, man, Jada must have really had you in a strong entanglement for you to react that way and, and protect her that way. Or like maybe he rubs his face and is like, oh, now we know what happens when you rub the genie in a bottle the wrong way. Ha, ha, ha. Something. Go in on him. You have Will Smith genie who painted himself blue in a, in a garbage movie. 
You have Jada, who is publicly bragging about sleeping around with people and claiming it was open relationship where we were separated and it's all good. I'm okay to do that. And she's still got this stranglehold on this guy, have him by the ball bag or the empty sack that he's got now where he's simping around and acting like a fool in front of everybody to protect her from a joke. At that point, Chris Rock should have just thrown the gloves out and gone all in on her. That's what he should have done. And, and, you know, luckily, the Internet always wins and they make the memes and the jokes for us because they're going ham on it now. And that's exactly what Will Smith was was claiming to protect his family from, which is really funny and ironic if you think about it, because his whole bullshit, dramatic speech, six minutes acceptance speech, which he shouldn't have been allowed to give anyway. He should have been tossed the fuck out of the show immediately after assaulting somebody on live television. But he's given this speech talking about how he's a fierce protector of his family. And you don't, you know, get my wife's name out of your mouth and don't joke about her anymore. Meanwhile, all he did was open the door for endless jokes about his wife and now him too. So he did the opposite of what he claimed he was trying to do. Which is really the the best joke of it all is that it completely backfired because now they're the laughing stock of Hollywood for the next couple of weeks. Except, except in Hollywood land where they gave him a standing ovation. This is what they like to see. This is why it was a lose-lose for Chris Rock. Because he did nothing wrong besides making a shitty joke, a lame-ass joke. He responded like a mature adult. And Will Smith gets a standing ovation. And then he goes and parties it up after in the after party. I mean, explain that to me. How is that justified whatsoever? Oh, well, he disrespected his wife. No, he didn't. He made a garbage joke. And this guy gets a standing ovation for being a, a giant puss beta bitch boy about it. Because his wife can't handle a joke, a clearly innocuous joke, and she sends, she sticks the dogs out on him. The, the neutered dog on him. That's the biggest joke of it all. And that's the, that's the final lesson, I guess. Call lesson number six. Always find the humor in every situation. And, then we, and we did it. And that's that. That was a quick one. Hopefully, I don't even know. I could have been blabbering on for God knows how long. I don't have a timer on here. I probably should. But we're running, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That's pretty quick for us. Anyway, before we go, the important stuff, the big three, all right? Exercise every day, the easiest thing you can do. Very simple. Just get up and move, all right? It's the simplest thing that has the longest lasting effect, the longest lasting positive effect, all right? Because it helps you physically, emotionally, and mentally improve your health on all three facets, all three pillars of health right there. That's what it does. Exercise helps all of it. Okay. And I know we don't talk about the mental, emotional side too much. I try to when I can, but that's vitally important. Vitally important. Because people don't, people don't commit suicide because they broke their arm. They commit suicide because they're deeply depressed and have a lot of mental and emotional uh, medical issues going on that they can't get out of. They're buried in them. And if something as simple as exercising every day will help even just a little bit, it's worth the shot. It's worth the effort to put in, the simple effort to just get up and go for a walk, move the body, get it going. So think about that. Think about the, that's why it's important. It's not so you could be a meathead or a crossfitter or whatever. It's for the, it's the, for the triumvirate, the pillars of health, not just the physical, but the mental and emotional, which in my opinion is, is always held to a lower standard than physical health. And it shouldn't be. It absolutely shouldn't be. Because more people are dying of suicides every day 
than they are of broken arms. Now I know, oh, what about cancer and heart disease and stuff? Yeah, I got, I got it. There's a lot of physical health conditions that are, are very serious and are killing people. Understand that. But we don't have, you know, the best treatments just yet for mental and emotional health issues, health problems. But again, if exercise can help a little bit, it's free. Give it a shot. It can only help. It can't hurt. You think going for a walk is going to hurt you? It's not. I promise you. Unless, unless you get hit by a car. Hope you don't, but number two, what are we what are we talking about here, Libretti? Number two, don't be a shitty person. The toughest one to do. Clearly, the toughest one to do. Because you have so you even have people like Will Smith who are highly regarded. Everybody loves him. Apparently, he's a super nice guy, apparently, to other people behind the screen, I guess. And even he falls into the shitty person category because it's easy. You get emotionally charged up about something. You react with those, those emotions before you let your brain kick in and think logically for you. It happens to the best of us. I get it. And it's even easier to do and be a shitty person on the Internet. When you don't have to physically do anything, you just have to type away a twit or an Instagram comment and be an asshole. And that's it. That's not even a person at that point. That's an Instagram handle. But I promise you, if you work hard to avoid doing that stuff a little every day, you'll be a better, happier person. Because that shit only brings you down. It brings you down to negative town. And nobody wants to live there. That's a horrible place to live. That's where you get the depression and the anxiety and the other serious mental health issues as well. So you couple that with no exercise and you're in a bad spot. You're living in a bad spot right now. And then number three, the most important one, be genuinely thankful and grateful for all the good you have in your lives. Focus in on the gratitude and be happy about the good things you have in your lives as opposed to focusing on the shit you don't have that you want, maybe. And I know it sounds hippy dippy, like focus on the positive, man, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about being actually grateful, feeling that inside you, and understanding how much better you have it currently than you could have it, than others have it. And you add that in with not being a shitty person and you add that in with exercising every day and that's the recipe to staying strong and being a better, happier person in your life and everybody else's lives around you. It's three simple concepts. That's the triumvirate. That's the real triumvirate, the real pillars of happiness right there. That's all you, if you just do those three things and focus on those three things, as difficult as they might be, you're going to be better. You're going to be happier. The people around you are going to see it. They're going to be better and happier. And the good and the happy and the gratitude and the positivity is going to spread in a real genuine way. Not the garbage that you just see by the, by the self motivators on Instagram that just throw up a saying and then don't actually follow what they preach and are a bunch of hypocrites just because so they can get follows and likes and monies. This is how you do it for real. The big three. And now that's all I got. Thank you guys for listening today. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned a couple of lessons out of this. If not, let me know. Like and subscribe. Leave the feedbacks. I love the feedback. I try to respond to everybody's feedback, whether it's a DM or a comment or a text or whatever it is. I love it. So keep going. I'll respond to all you guys. I promise I'll get to it. Don't worry. And then don't forget, obviously, the, the, the tank tops, the shirts. Check them out. I think I posted it on Facebook and Instagram as well. So you can DM me, text me, email me, Liberty Podcast Diary at Gmail. Uh, for the details and I'll give you the the sizes available still large and medium and uh, we can work on the shipping and the Venmo and the how you doings and all that good stuff so that's it thank you guys again 
I love you all. Stay strong. <laughs>